deem not life a thing of consequence. For look at the yawning void of the future and that other limitless space, the past. Marcus Aurelius. The last element left on my checklist of elemental lizards was one suggested to me, and that is the element of void. When I think about a beautiful void, I think of starry skies and cosmic nebula. The model I'll be using for this is the Saurian Starhost Raptor Rider Veteran. Lots of armor and lots of scales, so I'll have a good amount of surface to make starry and nebulous. And since they're separate creatures, it means I can play with the color a bit to make them look different. But how would I paint something spacey on a 3D model? Well, that's going to take some experimentation. The first thing I want to make sure I get right is giving a purple tint to the armor to simulate the color of void but without getting too bright. I'll start with a mix of my purple, white, and black. This should give me a nice opaque paint that will cover the black primer and allow me to start specifically from a purple, though I can already tell in this case, it's too bright for what I'm after. So I mix up a little more black into that original mix. This is looking a little bit better, nice and dark, but visibly still quite purple, though even this might still be too bright. So I've got one more test to do, starting with just the purple and a little bit of black and maybe a speck of white. By using mostly the purple, it should remain transparent over the black primer layer and basically give me a tinted black. The only thing about this method is it's going to take two coats to give me a nice even layer. For the stars themselves, I have three ideas for getting them on. First would be to dot them on myself with some white. This works, but it's really hard for me to be random in a random way. I'm too human, and unless I were to copy something directly, this is just going to look more like polka dots. Next attempt is to blow them from my brush. I thin the white out so it's more loose in my bristles. It should give me the true random I'm looking for by not being applied directly to the model. But yeah, it's not as controlled as I'd like. I got my stars all right, but way too many of them. So my last idea is my airbrush. When learning how to use an airbrush, one of the things we have to get used to not doing is pulling back on the needle before starting air to avoid speckling. But what if I do it on purpose? Pulling the needle back a few times to load it with paint, then kicking it in gear to splatter it on the model. And wow, this is exactly what I wanted. There's variation in size between star specks, but way smaller than I can get normally and lots of control. This is definitely the method. Now I have to think about shading. Color in stars is all well and good, but without shading, it can be pretty flat. So I'll try two methods here. My first attempt is just going to be using a lighter mixture of the purple in the brush and putting it in the shadows, feathering it out when I need to for a smooth transition. This is a good shadow, but it could end up covering the finer star patterns. So my second method is just going to be using some purple premixed shade in my airbrush with some medium. This should already be transparent, so even if I go too heavy, those stars should still shine through, but now tinted. Another thing I have to worry about is the nebulas. I know it's going to take some wet blending to get a nice transition between black and white, but what kind? I'll start with a loaded brush filling my brush with a thin black and then getting some white on the tip. Now I'll admit this time I probably added way too much white, but it's still having the problem of the black not penetrating down the bristles enough to get that pure black to mix with the white. So the other method will be to give the surface a full on coating of a very thin wet black first, then add some white to the tip of my brush and stipple it around the wet surface. This one I think works better because the black will always tint the white as I put it down, so it stays black in the extremes. Plus, I can always add more white to the brush to go over where I want brighter again. 
I wasn't ready to give up on the other method just yet and wanted to test a black wash over it just to see if it would be worth it to re-darken the crevices while I wait for the other side to dry. Unfortunately, I think this might end up looking too dirty. When the arm dries, it's clear this is the route I want to go. A nice contrast from light to dark in a cloudy sort of way that still lets imperfections exist. To add the color, I already know how I'm going to do that. Like the purple pre-mixed wash in the airbrush got me my shadows, I'm going to do the same for my colors. Just blending them up along the arm until I get a nice multicolor gradient to colorize those clouds. With this testing out of the way, it's time to refine what I've learned and apply it to my final model. My very first refinement is actually going to be something right at the start. I did try a bit of edge highlighting to see if I could get highlights, and it didn't really work for me. So instead I'm going to undercoat before adding the purple void layer, taking some white, black, phthalo blue, and mixing them for a mid-tone desaturated blue. And using my angle shader, I'm going to get its bristles covered in black and dip the tip into that blue. With this, I'll start to make gradients towards the edges. This will give me a more subtle edge highlight. The reason I picked blue was just so it has some hue difference, but most of the work will be done by the white in the mix when it comes to the next step. For the purple overcoat, I'm going to skip the white entirely, but add both thinner and matte medium because I want this to flow from my brush like ink on paper, which is why I wick some of it out as well. So that when I'm covering the surface, it leaves an even, translucent finish, staining the black and blue and everything in between, and turning it all a nice purple, but keeping all those highlights within visible. I'll do some stars now, though this won't be the last time, so I make sure not to go overboard at this stage. This is just so the purple shade has something to cover so that some of the stars will be white and the other shaded purple instead. When it comes to the scales, one thing I didn't love was how dark the shadows were. It makes sense for space, but not this miniature. So for my wet layer, I'm starting with a really dark gray instead before spreading out the white on all the muscle definition. This time I want to make sure I keep a lot of the scales texture as well, so I'm going in with some pure white and a fine brush, just giving the scales edges and sharp points those highlights so that they don't look like simple blobs of color once the color goes on. After that is when I do my second covering of the stars. This will give the night sky armor some pure white stars and my scales some starry textures as well. When it comes to adding the color, this is where I'm going to change some things up as well. The airbrush works well to give the surface color, but it doesn't create any shadows. So instead of doing two layers of spray, I'm going to do one wash layer with the brush, combining all the colors over the surface of the scales. Then when that's fully dry, I'll take the same wash colors into my airbrush and use it to further colorize the surface with those colors. My one last little refinement is going to be the stars themselves. While I didn't like the painted on look, I do like the idea of some of the larger ones having that more traditional star-like look. The airbrush gave me my randomness, and now I'll use the brush to draw pointed crosses over some of the larger ones. This will give them that familiar star style. There was one thing I wanted to try when it came to lining some of the armor, but I thought it might ruin what I had so far, and I chickened out. But other than that, I went around and painted some things that just had to be normal. Teeth and tongues are not exactly great at being a canvas to the cosmos. And of course, since it's a sci-fi lizard, I had to add some glow. My favorite thing about this is for something that looks so amazing, it can actually be quick. Most of it was just getting something in black and white, then spraying the color over it. Which sounds familiar, right? Please subscribe if you liked this video, and check the link in the description to my Discord where I talk all sorts of nonsense about miniatures painting, provide critique on paint jobs, and occasionally stream.